Brother Mandingo. Yes, sir. First of all, I give thanks and praises to the Almighty Creator, Olodomare, Oloron, Choko, Moari, Ra, Tata, Maulisa, and the many other African names that we have for the Almighty Creator. Of course, Ashe. And my presentation here now is about reggae music and its impact specifically in this country. First of all, in terms of the subject matter, a lot of times people present themselves to speak about a particular subject but they don't tell the audience about themselves in terms of what are their qualifications to talk about what they are supposed to be talking about. I always tell people who I am. I'm an African who was born and bred in Jamaica went to primary and secondary school there, came here and studied as a Jamaica government scholar, did civil engineering. So I came here in early adulthood, so to speak. I was still in my teens, latest teens. In Jamaica, I grew up in the music world. My parents who were teachers, headmaster, mistress, were lovers of music and they supported the music of all people. So where I grew up, in St. John's Road, Spanish Town, Friendship Government School, the teacher's cottage was there. My father was the headmaster, my mother the deputy head. Virtually all the top sound systems in Jamaica played in the home, on the premises where I live. The teacher's cottage was at the back, the school was at the front, and dances, sound system dances, were allowed to be kept by my father. He allowed promoters to keep dances there. And virtually all the top songs in Jamaica from the early 1950s coming through played there. Talking about Cole Nix, the first champion. Tom the Great, Sebastian, who succeeded Cole Nix. Where his DJ was a man who was later to be known as Duke Vin, the unbeaten champion in this country. But in Jamaica, Duke Vin, the top DJ, was known as Shine Shoes Vinny because his shoes were always shining. He was my very good friend. When he came to this country, he stole away in 1954 with Count Suckle, who later established the Q Club by Parade Street, another, and another friend of theirs by the name of Lenny Fry. Stole away from Bowden in St. Thomas, Eastern Jamaica, that's Paul Bogle's parish, one of our national heroes who said, remember your color and cleave to the black. And of course, for those of you who don't know, Paul Bogle was the one who led the Moral Bay Rebellion in 1865. And in 1955, Duvin started the first sound system in this country. But of course, sound system started in Jamaica from the 1940s coming through. So songs like, as I said, Count Mix. Tom the Great Sebastian, that new win, Shine Shoes with the Jamaica used to DJ. Sir Cox the Downbeat, later of Studio One label. Duke Reed, the Trojan, from which the record company in the 60s here, 1968-67, established itself. 
call himself Trojan, that Trojan name after Duke reads. Duke read the Trojan name. That's how the label came about for the English company here, which was based in Wilson, London, North Western. There were songs that used to play where I lived, as I said, in Spanish town, like Ruddy, the Supreme Ruler of Songs, Stereo, Moody's, Was the Almighty, Mellow Canary, The Whip, many other songs. So I grew up in the sound system environment because when radio would not play the music of our people in Jamaica, the grassroots people in Jamaica, it's sound systems you had to go to to listen to the music made by our people. Because there was this racist and classist discrimination against music coming from the grassroots. Because the people in that colonial society in Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean look down on the culture and the people from the grassroots. And you know the grassroots is the overwhelming majority of the people. And without the labor of the grassroots people, they could not have had any form of wealth, no form of wealth. They exploited our people as in the days of chattel enslavement and afterwards the same exploitation continued. And whilst living off our people, they despised our people at the same time because of their racist, classist mentality. There is supposed to be a film showed this evening by Bonnie Striker Lee, which you people will be seeing. He's one of Jamaica's legendary record producers. And my connection with Bonnie Striker Lee is that I knew him as a youth because he was a friend of my parents. The film that you're going to see about Bonnie Lee starts with him producing in 1967. In 1967, there was no reggae yet. Reggae came about in 1968. What was on the scene was rock steady. And rock steady, before rock steady, it was ska. And before ska, the national music of Jamaica was mentor. There are other forms of music, to world music and that type of thing, but was mentor, then skia, then rocksteady. So when he started producing in 1967, but I knew him before because he was a friend of my parents. And in 1965, Easter, he and my father kept a dance at Friendship Government School, St. John's Road, Spanish Town, Easter. Three days and night, dance and stage show. And the sound system was none other than the sound system of Prince Buster. Prince Buster's sound system. And the artist was Derek Morgan who was later to become his brother-in-law. At the time, Derek Morgan and one of Bonnie's sisters were just boyfriend and girlfriend, as they say. Were married yet. But he was a star. And there was also Keith Slim Smith, the great Keith Slim Smith, who was the original leader for the techniques and later on for the uniques. And also, a man who was later to become famous in the Jamaican music world, Roy Shirley. Sounds like music feel, holding, etc. So we're talking 1965. So we're talking in the days of Skia. Not rock steady, much less ready. 
So I am coming from that grassroots. So no one who did not grow up and have this experience can come and tell me any nonsense about this story. Because this story is part of the past of my life. And the reason why I'm saying that is that racist parasites and vultures, they have this tendency to go all over the African world. The other islands in the Caribbean and in Mother Africa. And say that they are making films and documentaries about our people and our cultures. And they know absolutely nothing about our people. And making a lot of money. You see them on TV programs and so on. Saying that they are experts and authorities on us. <laughs> they can't be any experts and authorities on us. The only experts and authorities on us as African people are us. Because it is not fidel story, it's fury story. And no one can tell our story except us. And sadly, because the truth was always this open, we have some of our people with that slave mentality who aid and abet these parasitic cultures. making money off our culture. These so-called travel programs that you see and music programs and some of our brothers and sisters, legends in the States and in Mother Africa. We see it on the TV programs and in films and they don't get our people to be talking. You know. They are talking. They are the authorities. When you look in newspapers like The Guardian or whatever, their papers, they are the ones who write so-called articles about us. As if we are so dumb, we are so stupid, we can write and speak for ourselves, which we know that is a total lie. But it's deliberate. And we always have those few traitors who work with them and work against us. Never forget that. Because we are in a war situation for centuries and there are always two sets of enemies. The external enemies who are them, we can see them, and the internal enemies, the ones who racially look like us but work against us. And when you're fighting a war, you're fighting a war on two fronts. At the same time, you can't put off anything. You have to be dealing with the external enemy and the eternal enemy at the same time. Because what they have in common is that they are enemies. Many years ago, there was this young English girl, who was about in the 1980s, told me that, oh, you're a mandingo. I have been told that you are the man to get the information from because you know all about the Jamaican music industry and the people who are in it, etc. So I said, what is it that you want? She wanted to make a program about the artists who had had chart success in the British charts. And you know, we have had chart successes in the British charts like Sir Cox's Studio One with the Scatterlights and the Guns of Navarone that was on in the, the charts at one time. We have had um, Desmond Decker and the ESAs with Israelites, which in 1969 was the first Jamaican record to go to number one in the British charts. Before that, he had 007 that went up high to. You had Ken Boone, 1974, Everything I Own. We have Dave Van Collins, 1971, number one in the British charts. Double Barry, and let me just clear up this about Dave Van Collins. A lot of people think that they are brothers, so to speak. Yes, they are brothers, in terms of we are the same people and so on. But what it is, is that D. 
David's gave back Ziba. And so his answer colleagues, the keyboard genius. So I'm just explaining. So when people see Dave and Anza Collins, Dave is not Dave Collins. He's Dave Barker. <clears throat> and Anza is Anza Collins, but they're just titled in the producer, Winston Riley, as Dave and Anza Collins. Just clarifying that situation. So anyway, I said to her, yes, I can help you since you want to do a documentary where this is concerned. So I say, what am I going to get for my information? Silence. So I said, what am I going to get for the information from me that you want? I have the information. You have been reliably informed. What am I going to get for my information? Oh. I can take you for a drink. I said, take me for a drink. I said, let me tell you something. Obviously, you are accustomed to some for people who you can treat like that. I'm a different kind of African. I'm from the Marcus Yard School. I said, you have already told me that I know you have a budget and that budget entails you, which you have admitted, going to Jamaica, staying in a hotel, and you'll be paid. And you're not being paid hundreds of pounds, you'll be paid thousands of pounds. And you want me to do this, and all that I will be getting is a drink. Needless to say, that didn't work out. But the sad truth is, we have some of our people who allow themselves to be used like that. That's a fact. Let us not try and pretend otherwise. Truth is truth, and it's only the truth can set you free. We have to call a spade a spade, as my mother says. Tell it like it is. Because you can have no solution if you are telling lies. So she wasn't able to get anywhere with me. You notice a lot of times when obituaries are written in the English press, they rarely, rarely, miraculously get one of us to write the obituaries is always some Caucasian so-called music expert on our culture. It's not that I have others as journalists because I'm also a journalist. I haven't tried it. But they always come with some excuses. Either they have someone already or but it's some excuse, but it's a no-no. So it's a closed circle. So, in every way, they must make money because you know when they write these obituaries, they get paid for it. I was lucky once when I wrote the obituary for Duke Vin, the first sound system man, my friend. It came out in the Times. But the thing with the Times that I don't like, unlike the others, is that when you write, you are not credited in the print as the writer. The origin is deep, deep, which, which is wrong. Whether you even paid or not, I was paid, but that's not the point. Sometimes it's not about the money, it's a principle. Because even when you're not paid, the fact that you are credited publicly, you know that helps you to get future work. <clears throat> because that will say, oh, well, this person knows what they're doing. But when you are not credited, this is what the times do. But the others, they credit. But they don't allow all people to do the right thing. So I can tell you all this. I am known in the English music world as Mandingo 
that difficult, hard to please African, etc. And they even tell lies and say that I am racist because they are racist. When you don't tolerate their racism, they say that you are the racist. When they are the racist. You see? And we know we can't be racist. Simple. Plain and simple. You know? But they have that mentality. And then you have some of our people who are mentally enslaved work with them against people like myself. They will go to any so-called European DJ or so-called writer in our culture. And I'm not calling any names because to call names would be to promote those devils. And I'm not promoting any devil. But some of you here know who and who I'm talking about. No promotion for enemies. You know? So they do everything to try to prevent me from participating in my very own African culture. But I never ever give up because I'm a born African soldier. And I don't deal with defeat, I only deal with victory. Every time. Every time. And this is what we must show and act for our youths that we must provide positive examples because a lot of old people who are in not just music but in other fields whether you're in nursing whether you're in engineering it's the same racism we all face it's not the professions that we are in because the racism and the racists are everywhere in everything there is no hiding place we have to deal with them or else they will deal with us in terms of keeping us down and one of the reasons why some of our youths are disillusioned and turn against each other in this stupid so-called post-school thing is the fact that they see too many of their adults parents and grandparents who don't stand up and support them so some of these youths because I engage with them a lot of our adults are even afraid to speak and engage with our youths when you have a situation where you are afraid to speak and engage with your youths and to guide and counsel them there is no hope and the youths do not respect adults, parents or grandparents who they see allow themselves to be subservient to racists who do not stand up and fight and you cannot blame the youths when all they see is a situation where there are no examples of their parents, grandparents or other adults standing up and showing them the way because the more of us as adults do this, is the more we we'll give our youths that courage to engage positively and not get caught up in negativity. It is our duty, the children did not come by themselves. When you check most of the youths who have been killed, killing each other, and so on, they come from families that are dysfunctional due to institutionalized and individual racism. But to acknowledge that is good. But we have to do something about it. And we cannot depend on our enemies to solve our problems. It is only we who can solve our problems. Which is why Marcus Gabi always stressed self-reliance in everything that we do because he or she who pays the type of calls it you. That's a fact. If you depend on me for money, for finance, you damn well have to do what I say. There's no negotiation. 
You do as I say. Because I run things. The only way that does not happen is that you do not depend on me and you are self-reliant. And this is why Marcus Garvey said in his philosophy and opinions, which is one of my main Bible. And by the way, Bible simply means book. That's all it means. Book. That the most dangerous one of the most dangerous members of some of the most dangerous members of our African race are those who depend on other races who depend on your philanthropy because once you depend on them they will always get you to turn back the clock of progress where your people are concerned I was told I have 10 minutes a few minutes ago I have about 5 minutes now I have more to say and as Mandingo, I started producing in 1977. At the time, I was a civil engineer and the Ministry of Works in Jamaica. I had finished studying here. And I started my label in 1977. It's 2019 now. So we're talking 42 years ago. First production was Keep On Pushing, written by myself, the lyrics, and my brethren, Cornel Campbell. Colonel Campbell and I and his brother Jarais Robert Campbell and their sister Cecilia Campbell who used to sing with Rita Mali in the Solis who grew up in Spanish Club in the 60s. So my brethren and sister. So my first production was the Live Parks and Be the People Band, Channel One Studio. The engineer was my brethren Maxi, one of Channel One's engineer at 29 Maxi Avenue. I've had other hits after in 77. General because first hit sex educational class and there were no excluded in there so that he was talking about sex education is important, which is true, especially in that day when you're here you can have 50 million, so to speak, check as are how you feel, trans doing this and that. One moment you feel that you're a man, next moment you feel you're a woman, next moment you're neither he nor she. Or whatever, you know, what we call a madness. <laughs> you know, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I know we have the X and Y chromosomes and in biology at school. You know, I know how these things work. You know, when you're born, you're either male or you're female. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of our youths being confused, mixed up in them, and this is part of the element tactics and so on. One of Sugar Miner's first hits, Every Little Thing You Run to Babylon, was produced by me for my man in the name. Barry Brown II, Rasta, Man Woman of Dignity, produced by Ida Man Dingo. Um, Art Exemplis, Alta Nelis' sister, I produced records with her, you know, and many, many other people, Rankin, Joe, many others, Keith Silvertone, Spooley, many others, and so on. Holy Boy! Pioneer of Lovers Rock in this country is my cousin. I have produced him to an album called Mr. Versatile. He has been living in Brazil for over 10 years now. I did an interview with him about a year ago because um, he is one of the three biggest reggae artists in Brazil. The other two are Eric Donaldson from Kent Village near Bogwalk in St. Catherine, and the next one is Jimmy Cliff from Western Jamaica in the parish of what they call St. James and so on. But my final thing for now is this. Sister Jean who does this African market. I spoke here almost a lot of August, Marcus Messiah month about Marcus Gavi because Marcus Gavi is very very dear to me in a personal way, other than as a Pan-Africanist. His first wife, Amy Ashwood Gavi, is my mother's mother's cousin. And there's a place in Lago Grove, one Bassett Road, a plot there where she lived. And also on All Saints Road, on the corner of McGregor Road in Lago Grove, Nottingham, there's a house named after her. So that's my blood family. 
mother's mother's cousin. The second wife, in the actual year, in the jeeps year, was someone who I knew, who was visit the home regularly. Why? Her son, Marcus Yardy Jr., was my physics teacher at Kingston Technical High School in the 1960s. And together, he and I and brother, Elder Cyril Stewart, brother Newman, and brother, and, um, brother Thomas and others, in 1968 in Jamaica, we formed a political party known as the African Nationalist Union, which was to fight to seize political power away from the PNP and GNP, which is anti-Africa, anti marcus Garvey, you know, no, no, Norman, Manley, and Buster Manti, anti-African people, and so on. So I'm coming from that foundation, and, to, and Tuesday is the 17th, and it's the birthday of Marcus Garvey Jr., by the way. And you can check on YouTube, Dr. Marcus Garvey Jr. and the Arab slave trade, where he talks about the enslavement of African people by Arab Muslims, etc. Because a lot of nonsense and lies being spouted about. Because remember, the Arab Muslims were enslaving our people long before the Europeans, Christians got into that and, and thing. But finally, you see the bodily film that you're going to watch? Sister Jean, who does this African market, and believe you me, a lot more people should be at this market, both inside here and outside here. And it shows you the lack of awareness and consciousness by the vast majority of our people. If it was a little bling bling or rare thing, the place jump. But tell them anything about consciousness no. They may uh, watch EastEnders and Coronation, this and whatever, whatever, and we know the nonsense. But things to free up their minds and to make their progress, they're not interested in. And you're wasting their time and they don't want you know about no African, we're not African and all of that nonsense. As I've said, I've spoken here a lot of times, talking about Marcus Gary. But I got a call from Sister Jean and she said to me, Mandingo, I saw you in the Bunny Lee film. So I want you to come and participate. It's true. You will see me, just a little flicker. But guess what happened? When the film was being made, I leave you this. The guy who was doing it, the filmmaker, is a Caucasian, is a European. And the one who financing it to his partner and so on. Bonnie Lee told them and told me that he wants me to be in the documentary because I am one of those few people who know him from where we are. You know, they did not make me be a participant in talking about Bonnie Lee, who I have known from Jamaica before them and almost all of them who you will see in the film. You will see uh, Derek Morgan, who Derek was in personal contact with him before me because he was with his sister and so on. But not I the man Dingo. For one and one reason it goes to show. Keep all the Keep up the Pan Africanists. And this is why Marcus Gavi said in the philosophy and opinions only we can write for ourselves and must write for ourselves because the enemies will never write the true story where we are concerned and they could never do it either. So I Despite Bonnie Lee being my friend and my parents' friend, and him telling them, and I said it to them that Bonnie has told me that they agree, they made sure that I was not in Bonnie Lee's film. You see the divide and rule tactics, the key? I'll leave you with that. So 
I have to let you be aware because if I'm not, if I don't let you be aware of things like that, then I will be helping the deceit to go on and our people will continue to be taken unawares and continue to be manipulated. Only the truth can set us free. As Marcus Yabi said, one God, meaning one creator, one aim, one destiny. Man Dingo, the Gabi Icon, happy earth strong, Marcus Gabi Jr., who's earth strong, birthday will be this Tuesday, the 17th of September. His father is the 17th of August, and the son, my physics teacher and friend, is the 17th of September. One month later, no coincidence, African divine providence every time. Blessed love.